Welcome to the Virginia is for Laughers podcast brought to you by X2 Comedy. If you're looking to get more out of your Shenandoah Valley experience, then this is the podcast for you. You'll meet interesting people, the comedians that perform here, and find out more about what you can do and see. Whether you live here or plan to visit, listen to explore what helps make up our unique slice of heaven. Now here's your host, Dawn Davis Walmack. Hello, Laughers. I'm excited to introduce you to Laura Thompson, a professional artist and creative consultant. Laura came to James Madison University in 1998 and never left Harrisonburg. For 13 years, she taught in the public schools before taking a job as a creative services manager at Farmer Focus, an organic chicken company. She manages their creative partners, agencies, project requests, their over 10,000 digital assets, packaging and print design, art direction of the photography shoots, trade show and event planning. A woman of many talents, this professional artist has worked in stained and fused glass, graphite and watercolor, mixed media and oils. For the past 20 years, Laura has shown and sold her artwork by participating in solo, group, juried and invitational shows. As a creative consultant for small to medium sized businesses, she helps them clarify their branding and messaging to set up their creative department for growth and collaboration that helps business owners become their creative partners, dream clients. Welcome to the show, Laura. It's great to have you on today. Thank you so much, Dawn. I am really excited to be here. I am too. We are not strangers. We are not strangers at all. In fact, we're old workout body bodies, buddies from strong. <laughs> I don't true, know what's going on in the mind there, but you know, at strong figure <laughs> boot camp, we had a lot of fun sweating it out with Stephanie Walker over there, which is she was a previous guest on her show too. So this is getting this is getting to be a real family affair now. And yesterday we ran into each other at Caffeinate and Innovate, which is a monthly free community event held at the Perch co-working space that brings energizing people and ideas together over coffee and conversation. We bumped into each other and I was so excited to hear all the things that you are up to these days. And look at us go. We are here today doing a podcast interview. Thanks again for we, coming on. <laughs> we, sure. We did not waste any time for sure. <laughs> I know. Yesterday we're like doers, girl. So let's do this. Heck are yeah. you ready? Heck yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm ready. All right. First question. You are from Rog- Rochester, New York. How did you find out about James Madison University and why did you choose to go to school here? Uh, I get this question a lot. Um, I, as many people in their junior year of high school, was considering that college was the next step and got all those brochures from all the different schools. And somehow I found the JMU brochure. I'd never heard of this school, never really thought of myself as living in Virginia, but I did want to go south because Rochester is very, very cold most (laughs) of the year. And um, I was looking through the brochure and they had a breakdancing club. (laughs) <laughs> and I thought that that sounded cool. I didn't have any interest in joining it. I just thought it was cool that they had a breakdancing club. <laughs> and I kid you not, that is how I chose JMU. I came down here, visited. It felt, it fit like a glove. And that was the, uh, that was what actually piqued my interest in the school itself. And look at me now. <laughs> I have known you for a while and I have never heard this story and I am absolutely <laughs> totally in love with it. So do tell I you hadn't done it. Did you do break dancing at all? Nothing. Yeah. Nothing close to break dancing. No. I just <laughs> thought it was cool that it existed there. I don't I don't even know. Where was my where was were any of our brains when we were 17 though, you know? Um <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I think I think it was just the idea that that kind of um, culture existed. I was a little bit of a punk rocker in high school, so I guess I just thought it would be like I'd find my tribe or whatever. So yeah. Did Did you even go see any break dancing while you were when you got here? No. Mm mm. Mm mm. It was very arbitrary. And then, you know, of course, then once I learned more about the school and I took the tour and I understood, you know, some of the opportunities that were there, it was very uh, attractive. And, you know, they do draw a lot of people from New York and New Jersey because the the tuition prices are very reasonable for out of state, which a lot of places are not. So, um, so yeah, it, it 
just I got down here and never attended a single breakdancing competition or, or event. Um, but I had a great experience and I and I've stayed here ever since. You have. And an undergraduate degree was not enough for you. You went on to get a graduate degree as well. So that makes you a JMU double duke. What did you study at the university here? Um, so that's an interesting story, too. I came to college with zero real idea of what I want to do. Actually, I thought I was going to be an English major, um, mostly because you get told as an, I, I was, you know, I had always loved art, but you you just have this idea, or at least we did in the 90s and probably every, you know, for years before that, that if you are going to pursue art, you're going to be a starving artist. I mean, that there is a reason that that term exists. And um, so I didn't have any intention of pursuing art, but I landed in a work study, federal work study program my first year um, where I was working like 10 hours a week. And I just so happened to be placed in Duke Hall, which is the art and art history building. Now it's art, art history and design um, as a, an office gopher. So I just kind of I mailed things out and I took one thing from here to there and um, just sort of did administrative uh, work. And I was there 10 hours a week, looking around and going, I like art, this looks really cool. I want to try that. I want to try that. And so um, leading into my sophomore year, I decided that I wanted to apply to the program. And I brought my portfolio and uh, was accepted into the art program. Um, and decided to go the graphic design route, because uh, you could make money doing that. It was <laughs> a viable um, business oriented art job. So I went into that program. And then as I was in there, I was recruited into the art education program by um, a wonderful mentor of mine, uh, Catherine, Dr. Catherine Schwartz, um, who convinced me that I would be an excellent art teacher. And so um, that's what I did. I ended up adding an additional year to get all of the certifications, um, all the classes that I need needed to get my pre-K through 12 art licensure. So I graduated with a BFA in graphic design along with that. That's really great. That means you took a lot of art classes. And I imagine that had a wide array of experiences. And I'm curious, what was the most challenging art class for you and why? Uh, so this is funny, I think, because <laughs> the hardest class for me was photography, which is like the thing that so many people can do now. <laughs> <laughs> with the technology that we hold in our pockets and and people who you know have never taken a photography class can be really incredible photographers um and i like just couldn't get it figured out i i liked the process of it but i just didn't get it i it's so funny to me because it seems like it would just be you know composition and um, you know, finding, finding the, the subject and th those are all things I do in my other artwork, but it just did not click for me. So I, I felt a little bit like I struggled through the, my photography class, which was, uh, you know, the analog version with film and we developed it. It was all black and white, I think. Um, yeah. So that was, that was actually the hardest class for me, like way harder than welding. <laughs> or, you know, or, you know, any of the like screen printing, like those, I, you know, those, I felt like I did pretty well in, but yeah, no, photography was definitely the hardest. Okay. So do you, any photography now, did you overcome that or are you stick in, <laughs> stick in um, with all the I, other mediums? <laughs> no, uh, in my, in my job now I direct photography, which means that I tell somebody else what I am going for <laughs> and then they make the picture look the way that I want it to look. Um, I, I mean, I do some photography, um, to inform my paintings. So there is a piece of that, but the photograph itself never sees the light of day, just the painting that I've created from it. So mm -hmm. it has its place in my life. Um, obviously, I take pictures of my kids and mostly my dog um, and yeah, and my artwork now. But yeah, it's that's definitely a struggle that I've I've always had. There are lots of other people out there who are great at it and kudos to them. <laughs> definitely. There are people that really have a knack for it, for sure. So you got your uh, BFA and to be able to teach art or was that the master's I think anyway combined <laughs> to become an art teacher so I imagine that is what you taught in the public schools for 13 years is that correct so I taught 
every, basically every medium. Um, and I taught every grade level. So when I began teaching, um, my first teaching job was in Page County, which is a, um, a small, smallish county um, here over, over the mountain, as they say. And um, I taught in my first job for a school that was pre-K through seventh grade um, and had about 200 students in it, the tiny little country school. Um, and so I taught every single grade level. So I remember, I remember how crazy my schedule was because um, with kindergarten pre-K, that means you're teaching nine grade levels. And so you have to have plans for every single um, grade level and you would teach all of them in a day, except for Sundays, I didn't have pre-K because they only had it once a week. So that was crazy. And then when um, when the middle schools opened, they didn't have middle schools in Page County when I started. They actually only had elementary and then high school was 8th through 12th. So they decided we need middle schools. They opened a middle school and I transferred into the middle school for uh, two years after I'd been working pre-K through 7th for five. Um, and then ended up coming over to Harrisonburg, teaching at Thomas Harrison for five years. And then I ended up my last year teaching, um, joining the the art teachers over at Harrisonburg High School. So I've actually taught every single grade level, <laughs> pre-K <laughs> through 12 of art, but it was all mostly gen, you know, general art. So it was lots of different media. We would do printmaking and we would do clay and we would do drawing and painting and um, a lot of foundational stuff, you know, color mixing. And when you get l really little ones, you're like, this is how to hold scissors, you know? So, um, <laughs> but, and then yeah. as you get into the older grades, you get to talk about concept and, and how artists work and why they pick subject matter and why, even though it looks like you could do that too, um, you didn't and you can't. <laughs> um, and so I really, you know, I, I enjoyed it, but yeah, it was, it was pretty general. I've taught other other types of arts um, in the community, but um, it's pretty much all over the place, which is why I had that extra year of college because I had to take, make sure that I took classes in all the different media so that you could be able to teach it. Okay. When were you at Harrisonburg High School? What years were you there? Do you remember? 2016 to 2017. Okay. It was just, right. yeah, just that one, that one school year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so mm -hmm. then, hmm, before I get to that question, I want to ask this, knowing what you know now from your career after leaving the schools and your development as a professional artist and creative consultant, if you could go back as your younger self, would you have done anything different or changed your approach as an art teacher in the public schools? So that's, that's a good question. I, uh, one thing that I always tried to do, and I think knowing what I know now, I would have spent more time doing is explaining to um, budding artists that there are options that, that art is a viable career and that you can, you know, I always tried to say that, you know, like you can make money doing this or that, or, or, you know, animation and you guys like watching movies. And, but I don't think that I had as much um, knowledge of the other types of jobs there were out there. You know, I think I always thought of it as the making of things. And now that I'm in a position where I'm working with creatives, um, but also, you know, directing the design and the photography and trying to make sure that everything comes together as a cohesive uh, brand, um, you know, visual identity. Uh, I, I think that I would, I would have spent more time kind of talking about that, especially with the older kid, middle and high school kids who are sort of trying to figure out like, they're probably like, I don't, I thought I wanted to be an astronaut, <laughs> but maybe I don't, you know, maybe I want a job that's a little bit more attainable for most people. Um, and like really trying to open them up to that because um, I just have realized that there's a lot of <laughs> viable jobs out there in the arts that you just don't know about when you're, I didn't even know graphic design existed until I got to college and found out it was a major. I mean, it was never even introduced to me as a kid. Obviously, it's a very different time now. We have access to a lot of different information. But I think just especially because of that, really kind of encouraging those kids who, you know, really just are passionate about art to, to, to pursue it. And, you know, don't let somebody tell you that it's not that it's not a worthy, you know, 
life goal. Um, I think that we need to stop talking about the starving artist. You know, there's ways that you can do it to be a very successful person. I agree with that 150% because we all, we just don't all have the same talents and these artistic and performance talents that people have, there are a wide variety and they keep expanding of opportunities where we can take the talents we have and bless other people with what we've been gifted with. And yes, I'm all for, I, you know, th- we pay our comics and we do keep doing the best we can with that because we believe in that. We believe that there, we need to stop saying starving artists. We have just as much value as the astronaut or anybody else in their other positions. And so I am for this. Count me in. (laughs) Yes. Your graphic design background in school, I imagine, has something to do with you transitioning out of teaching in the public schools to becoming the creative services manager. Did you plan that or did the opportunity come to you? Uh, That was one of those wonderful Harrisonburg happenings that I feel what is one of the reasons I love this community so much is because there's so many overlapping connections. And um, I happened to be I was, I had gotten to a point with teaching, I really thought the transitioning to the high school would have helped would help me because I was teaching with two phenomenal art teachers. And I had always been like the lone wolf, because that's what art teachers tend to be or music teachers, any of the electives. Um, They're the one in the school and they don't have that collaborative um, team environment. So I thought, this is the change I need. I just need to have a team. And once I have a team, you know, maybe, maybe it'll re-inspire me. Um, And as much as I loved working with those teachers, um, I realized that was not the change I needed. I needed to just, I was kind of burnt out on teaching um, and really felt like it wasn't, I just couldn't do it anymore. And so I was sort of trying to explore other opportunities. Um, And I think a lot of teachers get into this. I I was lucky I had a graphic design background because a lot of, you know, just general ed teachers or other, you know, specialty teachers like science teachers or, or English teachers. It's like, what do you, if you went to school for education and then you decide like, this isn't the path for me anymore, or I've, you know, I'm ready to move along. Um, it's hard to know what to do next because it's like (laughs) you've been teaching like and that's an amazing skill and it's not easy and it's you know it's not for everyone but um, but you don't really you feel like well what else can I do and it's like well you can actually do a lot there's a lot that um, that a lot of skills you gain in in teaching um, that you can apply to other things but I ended up I was jurying a show for Larkin Arts. Rip Larkin, we miss you so much. Yeah. Um, and I was working with um, this, this woman who was actually the first creative uh, marketing designer for Farmer Focus. And she was telling me about a job that she, a job opportunity she got elsewhere. And I was like, well, what's happening with your job? Knowing kind of what the, what kind of work she had been doing. And she said, oh, are you interested? Let me put you in touch with you know, the powers of be. And I was like, okay, great. And so it was one of those where had we not been during that show together and, you know, and the owner, Valerie um, Smith was like, Hey, Sarah, tell Laura about your job, you know, this new job you got. It just sort of like happened. And then um, I was introduced to um, the person who ended up being the hiring manager and uh, we hit it off immediately. And I took the plunge. Um, I was able to accept the job in February of 2017. And I didn't and they were gracious enough to let me finish out the school year because I did not want to leave my, my team in a lurch. I didn't I I had committed to the year I was gonna go I was gonna get through it. And so I took one week of summer. uh, And then I started working full time um, on June 19th of 2017. And uh, there I am. And it was 100% because of my graphic design background. And ability to, I guess, get along with the hiring manager, you know, how it <laughs> kind of happens, you know, I, I think he had known a little bit about me. And so, yeah. again, that Harrisonburg community, it's like, you you know, once you once people kind of get to know you, there's a lot of connections, a lot of opportunities. So 
That was a little serendipitous, wasn't it? That's <laughs> it was uh, it was what I needed when I needed it. So um, I feel very fortunate, and I you know I'm still I still am there. So it's you know obviously it's been a really great opportunity, and I've learned a ton since I've been there. Yeah, I've never really met anyone who does what you do at Farmer Focus as a creative services manager. So I really would like to talk about that a little bit more with you to get a better understanding of what exactly is it that you do. (laughs) So first, what are digital assets? So that's a wonderful question. So digital assets would include anything um, from photographs, like digital photos to um, in our case, or in any sort of um, package goods, you would have sell sheets, you have um, any, like basically anything that's a print thing. If you have a brochure, if you have a poster, we have in-store point of sales materials. So we have like shelf dividers and channel strips and all these fancy terms for things that are stuff that you see in the grocery store with the product that you're buying. Um, We have all of that. We have um, trying to think of what else is in that library. We have, so we work with farmers, local farmers and um, all of the chicken that we sell is traceable to the farm that, it, that was raised at. And it's all organic and um, certified humane and traceable. And um, it's, you know, grown with care. Um, but we have a uh, farm ID on each package. And when you plug the farm ID into the website, you get to meet the farm, the farmer and see their farm. And so oh, cool. Um, one of the cool, like one of the first things I did in my job was I would go out to farms, meet the farmers with the photographer. Um, we would take photos of the farm and then that would end up on the website. So um, at first I felt like I was just sort of um, tagging along, you know, the photographer would take pictures as we talked to the farmer and they kind of showed us around. Um, but then it became apparent like, Oh, we actually need this kind of photos. And now we need this kind of photo. So, um, so that's where the art direction comes in. It's like, okay, well, we need a picture of the farmer with the chicken here. We need to see the chickens outside with a shade structure. We need need all these different types of things. Um, so with that, we ended up before we um, implemented the organizational system that we have now, we had like 8,000 photos (laughs) and other files at like posters and all the stuff that was just sort of in different places. And it wasn't very, you know, it wasn't in a central location. And, um, and I was sort of the, the divvier out of things. Like, so if somebody needed something, I would have to like email it to them. And so um, one of the biggest parts of my job, job as a creative services manager, one of the, my proudest things that I've done is I, I found a, um, a management platform that allows us to put all of our stuff in it. And then we can give access to, people to certain things that they need um, very easily. And so I'm sort of like the the manager of that whole thing now. Um, in addition to somebody in HR needs a, a job fair flyer, they come to me and then I give that to that assignment to one of our um, graphic design partners. They, you know, we go back and forth. I get approval from, you know, the HR person. And, you know, it just so, so I'm sort of like the almost like the middleman middle person, middle woman for that process um, of figuring out, you know, what do we need? um, What does it need to look like? What job, you know, what function does it have? What's the goal of this thing? And how do we make it a visual piece of um, either literature or a digital asset that, um, that will help us accomplish that goal? Okay. So the next two questions I have, I think are kind of related in a collaborative way. I think I'm going to start with the art direction first. Mm -hmm. You've touched on it a little bit for the photo shoots. And it sounds like you have the element of the farmer and the farm and these organic chickens. Mm -hmm. So which are, you know, a a squirrely bunch, I imagine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The worst talent to work with. And truly the ugliest spots you've ever seen, honestly. (laughs) We do we do a lot of turning of the chickens. You know, we have a, we set up a scene and we have to be like we need to turn like three of these chickens because we don't want to see that that, that unflattering side. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. I love that. That was a pleasant <laughs> surprise. Thank you for that. <laughs> but what? So how how does this artistic 
process work for a photo shoot you know so you you come with ideas or you get on site and you talk about the ideas how how does this yeah. work yeah <laughs> Um, well, I think, you know, it's helped that we had so, you know, even when I got there, we had, you know, probably a couple thousand photos, um, to kind of understand, you know, with web traffic and social media posts and things, you know, what kinds of images resonate the most with our, um, consumers. So understanding that, understanding like what customers, um, you know, like the retail brands, you know, what kinds of images do they need? Um, so it's just kind of figuring that out of, um, obviously when we visit a farm the first time when they're first joining, um, you know, we just have to kind of scope it out and see, you know, some of the farmers are a lot more shy than other farmers. Um, we do have, a um, a few old order Mennonite families that don't, they prefer not to be photographed at all. And so then we have to kind of work around that. Um, but basically just trying to, um, find, uh, engaging sort of lay like layouts and compositions of pictures of their farm. Um, but really we want to show, you know, all of our farms are, even though they're all, you know, poultry farms, they are all very different. And the people that you, that raise your chicken are all very different, unique souls, like we all are. Um, and trying to kind of capture the personality of that place. Um, and depending, because some of them are first, you know, we've got a couple of first generation farmers. This is the first time they've ever farmed. Um, and then we have some that are like 10th generation, you know, they, they come from a long line and, you know, it's, it's in their blood as, you know, as you say, but, um, but so that's part of it. The, the farm photography is, um, a huge piece of our traceability. Um, the other, side of the photography that I truly love is the food photography. So mm. we do have to do like package photography, which mm -hmm. as you can imagine, like raw chicken is not yeah. super fun to photograph, but <laughs> right. cooked food yes. and, um, and like kind of setting up scenes of like a dinner table and like people's hands, like, you know, interacting with the food, at, you know, as if you were kind of looking down from the top and um, and the process of that is sort of, you know, what, what I did is, um, I knew that we wanted some of those kinds of images and I just started looking online for other, um, other photography that I thought kind of jived with what our visual aesthetic is. And so there's a lot of subjectivity to that, but, um, but knowing who we are as a brand and how we, um, you know, and that's, that's part of this, you know, the whole graphic design and, and, um, art part is understanding like. Axe body spray is going to have much different photography <laughs> yeah. than, um, you know, like the native brand deodorant or whatever. Like, it's, yeah. you need to understand what the brand um, voice is and what kind of look they're going for and who the demographic is and like what those those kinds of people would want or be interested in seeing. And so um, figuring out what that aesthetic is and then being able to translate it to your, your own brand. Um, it, it takes a little bit of nuance and, um, but I've, I've really enjoyed it. And I think it's, it's really important too. You know, if you see, if, if you ever see ads for a, a C CPG, which is consumer packaged goods brand, um, that you really identify with it's, it, it's interesting. Or if you're like, Oh, that's a cool photo. Like it's interesting to just take a moment and be like, what did they do differently that I like? And this like, and this other one didn't, you know, kind of fell flat or whatever. So um, so just kind of understanding that and understanding, you know, how to make things look like they belong um, and are cohesive with the rest of, you know, because a fo photo versus a logo versus a layout, you know, they're all very different, but they can all feel um, like they belong. Yeah. And related. That's a mm -hmm. great segue into the next question. When you say you manage creative partners and agencies, what does that mean ex exactly? What are some examples also, by the way, of who are creative partners mm -hmm. and agencies? Yeah, so um, so I tend to work with a lot of graphic designers um, and we have about three, generally three to five, depending on the needs. But um, who we will source out projects to. And so we have like a, a project management system. And basically, I can just kind of assign things to different people. Um, and each of them have their own skill set or skill level too. So, um, 
you know, so we have one designer who's a, more of a junior designer who can kind of make edits to things, but isn't going to be doing a lot of the like new asset layout. Um, whereas we have more experienced designers who are going to do the trade show booth design because that's, you know, it's kind of a, a you know, a high stakes kind of um, project. Uh, so I do manage the projects that they're given and then sort of the back and forth as we work through any of the the details, providing them with clear direction on what it is that we're looking for them um, them to do. And then um, just making sure that there's proper approvals on all of that. And that, you know, that we go from opening a project to closing it because <laughs> that is, that is key. Um, you don't want somebody kind of leave somebody hanging for a while. Um, so that, and then as far as agencies goes, it just sort of depends right now. We are actually completely overhauling our website. Um, and so I am, um, sort of on our side, project managing that. So making sure that the agency has what it needs, making sure that our team is aligned on certain decisions that we're making, um, that will be reflected on the website. So, um, so I manage that agency and then we have another agency that we work with out of California who does a lot of our packaging design. And so, Um, even though they do the work, it's like giving them the direction and saying, okay, now we need this changed, um, or this needs to be, you know, we're coming out with this new product and we need a design for this. So, um, so that's the kind of the difference. And basically, I mean, with, it just depends on what your needs are, but with, um, package design, for instance, food packaging design is very, um, it's kind, kind of a niche. And so knowing like, you know, you need to put, pictures of the spices of whatever flavor um, notes that you're trying to convey. Because if you just say nacho cheese or whatever, that's very different than a picture of cheese, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) We we react to the, we're like "Mm, cheese, right? But if I read the word cheese, it doesn't really make, you know, it doesn't really kind of give those same cues and, and, you know, those visceral reactions of like, I want to eat that now. So, Um, So there's a lot of, you know, again, nuance with that. That's why we work with agencies for, you know, specific things. And it just sort of depends on what the needs are. But yeah, it's a lot of different, a lot of different irons and different fires. So a lot of moving parts. You know what I'm loving about your story, too, as I'm listening to you, is that last year at Harrisonburg High School, you're like, you know what I think I need? I think I need a team. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And now you really are working with a big team. It's Mm -hmm. just pretty cool how that all worked out for you and you yeah uh, yeah, and you are personally an artist 20 years now it's a good long time of selling your artwork as a professional artist so congratulations yay thank you thank you (laughs) that's so exciting so this seems like a lifelong passion and you are very talented. When did you know you were an artist and how were you introduced to it? Uh, well, I I don't know that I understood that I was an artist, but I was that kid in kindergarten who people wanted to draw things for them. <laughs> so um, it started early. I think, um, you know, my mom used to tell stories about like how I just kind of took to drawing and you know I always wanted I was always like I remember working on writing my name in cursive you know on napkins and restaurants when I was like far far before anybody would need to ever do that um I think I just really loved the making of things I spent a ton of time um in sketchbooks and art projects and um like constructing things out of, you know, I remember I made a guitar once out of a tissue box and some rubber bands and like a toilet uh, or a a paper towel tube, you know, and like tried to make a working instrument that was obviously not very functional, but, um, (laughs) but I just loved that, like solving and like, I want to do this. How do I do it? And, um, and art is just all that. I think, I mean, for, I guess my art is, I don't know. I can't speak for everyone else, but Um, there's so much problem solving that is involved with art. So I, I knew I was good at it. And I like I had a a penchant for it, if you would. Um, In seventh grade, my, my middle school art teacher saw something in me and allowed me to, which is very unusual, she allowed me to take a second semester of art as an independent study. Um, 
which I ended up doing as an art teacher for one of my students who is oh, now neat. a graduate from the art and art history department at JMU, who is now in Richmond and like pursuing art and tattooing. And she's amazing. And I can't wait to get my first tattoo from her. But, um, <laughs> but it, but it was that moment where I was like, somebody took, somebody saw something. They saw that I had the drive that they had de- determination and the talent. Um, and they sort of, you know, that kind of, I think that was maybe the first time I realized like, oh, like I'm, I excel at this, you know, I am doing, I do this very well compared to my peers, you know, which is <laughs> what you're do- constantly doing in middle school is comparing yourself to your peers. <laughs> um, so that's, I think that would be the first step, but then I didn't end up taking art in high school until junior year because my mom liked going to chorus concerts and stuff. <laughs> so I did that instead, um, so I really didn't make a lot of art in high school because again, it was like, well, what are you going to do with that? Like, what's the point, mm. you know? Um, and I just really wish that that attitude would change. And I hope it, I, I kind of feel like it is people we're are realizing moving. that it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're moving in that direction. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's the story. I don't know. I just, mm. I just have always been moved to create. So I do. <laughs> You do. Yeah. So you were singing, you said? Your mom I liked did, them. yeah. Okay. Is she yeah, like- I was in chorus. I mean, I was never like a solo, like, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't a standout, but my mom just liked going to chorus concerts and, you know. And you did that. To make my mom happy. <laughs> <laughs> I also drove her insane though. So like, like you know, I'm not trying to say I was an angel, but uh, that's I at least right. let her go to a chorus concert. <laughs> It's about balance. <laughs> uh-huh, yes, yes. So as an artist, then you like me making things. What is your process of creating your art? Um, so it's been hard since I've started working full time for Farmer Focus, because the one thing that I this is people are always like, do you miss teaching? I'm like, I miss the time off. <laughs> Is that, I mean, I hate to say it like, Uh, sure, there were like beautiful moments, but like, all you know, when it all comes down to it, I had a lot of um, planned time off that, you know, you're going to get at certain junctions and um, was able to make a lot more artwork during those times. So as I have sort of transitioned into this other position, um, my, my last show that I did solo show was actually five years ago. <laughs> um, when I first, you know, I, was, uh, yeah. I had already been making art, you know, and I transitioned over. And then it was just, you know, a piece here and there for local art shows for the past five years. Um, but I, I think my process sometimes gets to like, I get to a point where I have to make it like, I'll, I'll be like, it's, you know, I haven't arted in a while. Um, and it's fine. I'm okay with that. And I try to give myself grace and like not but then I do, I get to a point where I, I, it, I can feel, I don't know what it is. I can just feel this, like, I don't know, like this, this boxed up some, this thing like building inside of me. And I know, I know art is going to happen next. <laughs> I mean, it's not like as emergency as that, and it sounds very urgent, but, um, <laughs> but I, but it's at that moment, those moments, um, if I have had a little bit of a hiatus where I start I start deciding, okay, like, what am I going to do to get rid of this feeling? And so, um, so recently that, you know, as far as process goes, it was like, I had to, I had to get it out, whatever it was. Um, I had done a lot of oil painting previously. And during the pandemic, I just sort of, along with a lot of people kind of languished and like, even it's like, Oh, you had all this time at home. What are you gonna do? And I was like, I was not painting. I was, I just (laughs) couldn't, couldn't do it. Um, but when I decided like, finally I need to get out of this funk and like make a thing, um, what I realized is I didn't want to have to be that controlled and my oil paintings tend to be very realistic, um, and very controlled, um, with the, with the technique. And so I was like, I don't want to do that, but, um, but I want to art. So like, what am I going to do? And I just, I had started um, cutting some things out of magazines, um, some older magazines that I had found, um, probably some of them that I'd had from teaching and just started playing around with shapes and was like, that's interesting. You know, like maybe I could do something like that. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Then I um, took the plunge and decided to do this show, a local show called six by six by 30, which Ooh. the idea is that in 30 days you create 30 pieces that are six by six. So it's 
lots of little squares, but you're supposed to do art every day for 30 days. And I was like terrified of the show before because it just, I was like, I can't plan this into my life. And I was like, I'm going to do this. Uh, this is my thing. This, this is how I'm going to break out of my creative block. And um, started like, I was like, I'm just going to be abstract. I want to get my hands dirty. I want to use charcoal and paint, and whatever. And I wanted to do something very, very abstract. And I started doing it. And then I was like, what am I going to like, what next? Like, why would somebody want this on their wall if it's just this thing? And so then I was like, I just was trying to figure out like, what's the next step? And I just took out some of the pieces I cut out and just placed them on there and just was like, whoa. That's cool. <laughs> and it was, it was a, just, a, I was playing. And I think, you know, I, I will argue day, you know, all day long. Play is so important and is so neglected in our adult lives that it's, it's so unfortunate. It is why you do what you, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and you work hard, but you have to like, you know, fodder play is where <laughs> yeah. a lot of that inspiration co- comes from. And that's the same with visual art. It's, it's, you know, just like, what is, what happens if I do this? It's a lot of that. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then kind of figuring that out. So right now my process is I paint like very abstract um, backgrounds with acrylics and some other materials. And then I take these images I've cut out from like old national geographics and I create these little scenes and they're very, um, they, they have these like weird little narratives. A lot of my art just over time has been, um, it has a lot of tension. It has like, it's like absurdity and tension. Um, but it's also, I also try to make it like beautiful, um, where you're kind of conflicted <laughs> when you're looking at it. Cause you're like, this is a very beautiful painting of this very absurd thing that makes me a little uncomfortable. Um, that's probably the best sum summation of my work actually. Um, but yeah, it's for right now it's, um, I just wait for that feeling and then kind of see what needs to happen next. I have lots of plans right now though, cause I've been creating. So now I'm excited to kind of move forward. It was a little hard to get out of that several year hiatus though. Um, yeah. But I mean, always back at it. You just got to keep, got to keep creating if that's what you're, brain uh, and heart and body and soul is want to do yeah exactly yeah. once you get the creative juices flowing it's hard to stop them <laughs> and if it's mm-hmm. in you it's in yeah you. and I'm loving how you described your art there because when we saw each other yesterday you have these beautiful new square business cards and they have your artwork on one side of them and so there's different choices you gave me different choices that I could pick and I picked the battle hamster (laughs) yes and which which is poetic based on how you just described your art so that's exciting but you all laughers you get a chance to meet laura at any of her art openings or other endeavors you you need to get one of these business cards and right there you'll have a piece of her art (laughs) yes and you get to choose and you get to choose yeah (laughs) Yeah. Speaking of which, what do you sell? So these, the six by six, I imagine there are other sizes and other Mm -hmm. items that people can purchase should they like your art. So what's available? What do you sell? Um, Well, I am sad, but also happy to say that none of my six by sixes are available because I sold out that show. Um, Oh, cool. (laughs) Which is awesome. Yeah. Um, but I have just recently, um, I, and it's still in development, but hoping it will actually launch this week, um, have created a website where you can order um, not only originals, which I'll have the information about those. Um, and those come right now, my, you know, the stuff that I'm making comes in many different sizes, I would say, probably the largest is maybe um, 20 couple by 30 it's you know nothing nothing gigantic um all the way down to like five by sevens um but also that you'll be able to order any of the artworks um as a um, print a framed print printed on metal lots of different options different merch options um which i have yet to even select but things like coffee mugs or puzzles or um you know t-shirts or things like that um so that website will be launching soon. Um, and that will also include some of my um, previous oil painting works and then a couple of oil paintings that I actually um, still have from from a show that I did uh, several years ago. So 
Um, really excited about that. But, you know, I, I am, I love the idea of just getting it out there and, and providing a, a, a price point for every person. So, you know, you might not be able to buy a, you know, $400 painting, but you can buy like an $11 mug, you know, or yeah. something. Um, and just really, you know, giving access to it because I don't know, I feel like there's something different about my art. I, I've talked to several people about it. I, I've even looked online to see like, so who's doing things like this? And I just am not finding it anywhere. So I feel like I've got something, um, especially with this new, this new series. Um, it's just different and, um, and people who have a, a, you know, an interesting, um, aesthetic or like a what's the word I want to say um people who are it it just interested in in weird and unusual things um but that are also beautiful but create a little tension um (laughs) and I think that they'll really truly enjoy this work because it's just it's very strange yeah but I love it so fun a beautiful strange is what it is Mm -hmm. yeah and Mm -hmm. they can see some of this I believe in an art opening coming up at Pale Fire Brewing in Harrisonburg can you tell us a bit more about that and what laughers can expect to see and experience yes yeah. So, um, September 2nd, which is first Fridays in downtown Harrisonburg. Um, I will be at pale fire showing my art from five to eight for the opening. I plan to do a sort of tiny mini little art talk at around six 30, um, just sort of to whoever, you know, whoever's there, it's not anything formal. Just if you want to show up and listen to me talk for three minutes, um, to try to, you know, to, to hear about how this all came about. Um, I will have 11 new pieces that I've made um, this year and just finished up maybe a week ago. Um, Yeah. And I will be there with that. I will have some stickers for sale um, that have uh, some that are from one of the pieces sort of inspired from one of the pieces. And then I'll have um, my fancy business cards with some (laughs) of my smaller pieces on it and then information about the website um, and how you can order um, prints. And of course, I will be selling uh, my paintings there or my my mixed media works there as well. So um, however, you know, however you need to get money to me. <laughs> so many ways. <laughs> so many Let's ways. Let's count them all. <laughs> but even if you're not going to, I would love for right. you to come out and check it out and see what you think about it. See if you can, uh, you can create your own little narratives in, in the different pieces. Exactly. A pill fire has got great beer and now they've got amazing pizza. So you're going to have a good time regardless. Definitely check that out. And you do commission work also. If someone was interested in hiring you, what would that process look like? Yeah. So um, you can just reach out to me. Um, I know that we'll have a lot of that information in the show notes, but um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and, um, you know, I'm happy to share my uh, my email too, but basically it's, it's a process. Now, what I would say, this is actually like a PSA for, for people. Um, when you approach an artist for a commission, just make sure that you understand what kind of work that artist does. (laughs) Okay. So, so if you, for instance, if somebody came to me and they were like, I want a giant painting of Um, poppies in a field with butterflies. I I mean, I can do that, but that is not what I do. And so you just, I guess my, my thought is there's so many art, like amazing artists out there creating, and I'm not deterring people from coming to me, but, um, but it's a collaborative experience to do a commission. And, and I think making sure that you're selecting an artist that is going to, um, truly like feel what it is that you're trying to accomplish and, and picking them because of, um, work that they've done and that, you know, that they'll be able to accomplish what you want. So I guess as opposed to, you know, coming in and saying like, I found this picture on Pinterest. Um, can you make it? Well, first of all, I'd ask, is that somebody else's art? Because you should have them make it (laughs) because that's how you found it. Um, But, you know, just being sensitive to that, like, if you want me to create, you know, a specific thing, um, you know, using like I've done in the past, I've done an oil painting, uh, where people told me different, it was a couple that had just gotten married, and they wanted, they wanted uh, an oil painting kind of representing the two of them. So 
I kind of probed. It was like, okay, well, what are, you know, what are things like your interests and how can we combine these things? And so it ended up being like a big letter R that was like a, a wooden letter. And then um, we talked about like how when the woman was young, she really liked origami. Um, but then, but then when the man was young, he played a lot in Nintendo. And so what I ended up doing was like getting all this stuff together and creating a little still life thing and taking a photo of it and then painting it. So, um, so I was able to kind of listen to the the prompts that they were giving me, but just kind of like enjoying that experience and, and kind of going into it, knowing that the artist also has their ideas and being open about it. Um, but I love, I mean, I love it. I I've done some pet portraits that I think were fun. I've done them in oil and I've done them in um, like the watercolor and graphite. Um, so I, you know, I'm open to stuff. I just, if you, if you look at my art and you're like, well, I don't really like that style. Let me see if she can do something else. Like, I don't know what to tell you. There's just so many artists out there that you can approach. And um, I'm a huge advocate of, you know, find, find the person and like the art, the art that you resonate with and then in work with them because we all need it. And, and we're not, I'm not in direct competition with anyone else. I will give you names for other art. If you're looking for something and I know an artist who does it, I want you to go to them. Like I want, I want us all to kind of understand that it's, it's the bigger picture. It's the collaboration and, and, you know, a rising tide, uh, you know, races all ships, all all (laughs) ships. And so, yeah, so that, I mean, definitely just start a conversation, happy to meet over coffee and, you know, just, you know, see if it's a good fit, but yeah, absolutely. Yes. Great segue into the next question. Speaking of good fits, tell me more about your consulting business that you're starting for the small to medium sized businesses. What are the advantages and benefits of working with you to help them become their creative partners, dream clients? Well, I do feel like I have um, a very, a very unique position because I'm also a graphic designer. So I have been the creative. I have been on that side of the aisle, (laughs) the, the, uh, the, the wall. And I know the frustrations, um, that occur from both sides, working with freelancers now, and also having been a freelancer, um, in that, in that space. Um, what I've realized is the, biggest barrier is clear communication. Um, and I understand what needs to be communicated and how to do that efficiently. So, um, so not only can I help a business kind of get their creative, um, assets and foundation. So a shareable foundation, because as soon as it's not just one person doing stuff and you invite somebody else in to help you, you need that you need a collaborative space, period. I mean, you just if it's all on your desktop and saved in your downloads, and somebody else can't get to it, then you're not going to be able to collaborate. And you don't want to spend all your time trying to just find files, right? (laughs) You don't have time for that. You're a business owner, you've got stuff to do. She's Um, laughing because I'm shaking my head. You can't see us visually. (laughs) But I was doing the no. Yeah, I was agreeing with her. That's why she's laughing. (laughs) Right. And I mean, it just it's one of those things that I feel like, um, especially with that initial growth stage of a business, like you don't have time for that. (laughs) You are just trying to get you know, get that business and and push out that message as much as you can. And so having somebody come in and, and say, okay, this is how this is the plan. We're going to put this in this place. It's going to work this way. These are the things that you need to make sure that you have successful relationships with these creative partners, which can be graphic designers. They can be social media managers. They can be photographers. They can be website developers. It just whatever type of um, person you need and you're like, I need help with this visual thing or marketing piece, that would be, I would consider that a creative partner. Um, so the, 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 the advantage to working with me is that I know what they need because I've worked with those creative partners and I've been them. So making sure that you are not spinning your wheels. So here's, here's a, an example. You are, you have a, um, a coffee shop and you're like, we're going to have this event. And you're like, I need somebody to design a poster so we can put them up around town. And you contact a graphic designer. First of all, you need to know what, what have they done before? What does their stuff look like? Is it, is their style going to jive with what you're trying to communicate? So decisions like that need to be, you know, assessed and made. 
And then if you say to them, I need a poster. <laughs> and, uh, we, and then we go, okay, um, can you tell me more about that? And so it's the idea of instead of having the, the you're paying that person whose talent and expertise is in the design, you end up paying that person extra money to extract information from you. <laughs> Yeah, you are spending your money still doing the work because they still need that information from you. So getting people sort of trained up for how to have that relationship um, work efficiently and effectively so that that person gets what they need immediately. They can turn it around. You can work back and forth a little bit. But then you understand like, oh, actually, because there's a lot of this that happens too when working with creative partners. You're like, well, that's not what I needed. Mm -hmm. Well, you didn't explain that. And this per you, you can't assume this person knows anything about what you need until yeah. you tell them. And so really having that understanding and really kind of setting people up for success, having those relationships, saving you time, money and frustration for the whole thing, because not only are they going to need the information, but they're going to need your logo and they're going to need what fonts do you use? And they're going to need to know what, what kinds of, what kind of aesthetic are you going for? You know, is this, is this event a, um, you know, an acoustical cafe experience or is it a fundraiser for, you know, um, the local art camps or whatever, you know, right. That's going to, that's going to um, really change the, the vibe of, of this. And, you know, all of that stuff is important to making these assets that you are paying money for somebody to create successful. And so having um, just trying to sort of guide people through that and, and just provide them with a little bit more understanding of how that needs to work, I think it's going to be really helpful going forward. I think so too. That's why you and I are going to chat after this podcast. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that, that is going to happen. Well, as we wrap up here, can you share with the laughers how they can follow Laura Thompson on social media or otherwise to get more information and get in contact with you? Yes. Um, I My primary uh, platform is Instagram and you can find me at uh, L T is creative and that's E L L T E E is real creative. Sorry. Did I say that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> At L T is real creative. There we so, go. <laughs> um, and that's E L L T E E for L T. Um, and then I'm also, I've just recently started on the TikTok bandwagon. So there I'm at real underscore creative. And then on Facebook, I have a page called um, Laura Thompson Makes Art. And I am planning to get all of that a little bit less confusing. Um, but that's where I am now. And then my email is laura at realcreative.studio. Um, if you're interested in contacting me about anything, consulting, art making, um, any other interesting topics that you think it would be fun to talk about, um, I would love to hear from you. That sounds great. And Laffers will be sure to put this information for you in the show notes as well. Thank you so much, Laura. It has been really wonderful chatting up with you today on all things art related and creative consulting. I not only feel enlightened, but it was super fun as it is always to hang out with you. Thanks again, my friend. Thank you so much, Don, for having me. This has been such a pleasure. Definitely. Laughers, remember, you can check out Laura's art opening on September 2nd at Pellfire Brewing in Harrisonburg. Then to buy Laura's amazing artistic creations or inquire about her doing commission work for you, check out her website that is coming online at www.realcreative.studio. That's realcreative.studio. Plus, if you are a small to mid-sized business that needs help clarifying branding and messaging to set up your creative department, Laura is an expert with a wealth of great experience to help you. Visit realcreativeconsulting.com. That's realcreativeconsulting.com for more info. We'll also be sure to put all of this in the show notes for you as well, along with our contact information. And lastly, and most importantly, thanks for tuning in, Laughers. Out of all the podcasts out there, you picked us. And we think that's pretty darn special, just like you. Until next time, keep smiling. Bye. Bye. <laughs> 
Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Virginia is for Laughers podcast brought to you by X2 Comedy. We'll be dropping a new podcast every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so check back for another uplifting episode. Come to an X2 Comedy show or let us bring a show to you. To find out more, head to x2comedy.com. Be sure to share us with a friend. Until next time, cheers. Cheers.